What is up everybody, Dak here, and today I'm going to show you how to find the tuning frequency of a ported speak enclosure, in particular that one right there. Uh, these two enclosures I've built a while ago, and I designed them to tune them to 35 hertz. I'm not sure actually what they're tuned yet, as I haven't tested them yet, so I want to do that right now in order to see if they have come out around 35 hertz. Now the first way I'm going to be doing it is the quickest way, and it's by using this thing right here, uh, Dayton Dats V3 Speaker Analyzer. This thing uh, gets a bunch of specs for speakers using the impedance graph, and it's quite a useful device. It, um, it's around, I think, 150 US dollars, somewhere around that range. This one cost me 240 Australian dollars. So when you consider it to other test equipment, it's quite reasonably priced. Uh, it does operate on a computer though using the software right here. Apologies for the glare of the torch, I can't turn it off while the recording's going. Um, but in order to work out the tuning frequency, what you do is you click right here, impedance sweep. Hear that, just did an impedance sweep. And now for a ported speaker enclosure, the tuning frequency is the lowest part of this dip right here, which is 33.3 hertz. Now, I intended to design this box with a tuning frequency of 35, and 33.3 is uh, pretty damn good. Even Could even wander a bit, depending on weather conditions. There's 35 right there, and it's still very close to this dip. So, this one's come out quite well. Now, of course, this method here is kind of relatively expensive if you only want to test the tuning frequency of one enclosure. So, I'll also show you how to use just a standard multimeter in order to work out the tuning frequency of a ported speed enclosure. Now for the next part of the test, a multimeter like this one is perfectly suitable, although since this one's got a pretty cruddy screen, instead I'm going to be using this one right here, which is a clamp meter, so I could measure the current using the clamp, but as I'm doing an analog for a standard multimeter, I'm just going to be using the voltage uh, inputs right down the bottom. So the setup looks like this, focus. Here we have the speaker lead, just like before. Right here, I have two resistors. These two resistors are, also sorry if there's quite a bit of fan noise. Uh, these two resistors are 0.5 ohms each, or thereabouts, 0.47. So when two of them are in series, I end up at about one ohm. Now what's very interesting about a resistance of 1 ohm is voltage equals current times resistance. Well that one actually should technically be an I in physics terms. But uh, voltage equals current times resistance. Now because resistance we know is 1 ohm, voltage equals current times 1. So voltage equals current. So that means that whatever voltage we measure across the 1 ohm resistor is how much current is going through the 1 ohm resistor. So that way we can tell how much current is going through the speaker because if it goes through the resistor, it has to go through the speaker because they're in series. One of the first things is you'll need to have an audio source and an amplifier for this one. I'm using that car amp right there with computer power supply in order to run it, and the audio source is going to be test tones off just this iPad right here. Now once again we'll have a closer look over here. Uh, now this is just going to be uh, a relative impedance sweep, so I'm not actually going to get the exact numbers for the impedance, but I'm going to be able to see a curve appear like I did before. I'm going to be able to see the two peaks and the dip in between the peaks, which is where the tuning frequency is. So you can see right here, I've got the black lead on the negative and then I've got the two resistors in series and then I've got the first red lead. Now if I measure the voltage across these two points I'll be able to work out the current going through the speaker. Now you can also see the red probe there and here's the black one. Now they measure the voltage across the entire circuit, the amount of voltage the amplifier is putting out. So if I measure the voltage between these two, I'll be able to see the total voltage the amplifier is putting out. Now in order to actually find out the impedance, which is the reactive resistance of the speaker, 
we can rewrite this equation right here. You can see that if we divide both sides by the current, so voltage equals current times resistance, once again that's usually an I, but if we divide each side by current, then what we can do is we can cancel the two currents out and see voltage divided by current equals resistance. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be finding the voltage across the amplifier and we're going to be finding the current going through the resistors in order to find the resistance at any particular frequency. All right, so the first thing I've done is I'm starting at the bottom with 16 hertz. You can see the driver moving right there. So I'm measuring the voltage across the whole output and it's around 2 volts. And I think I'm going to be going with 2 volts for this test. It will change over time and that's why we're, cha we're testing it all the time. So recording the voltage and the current for each frequency just to make sure we get a nice accurate curve. As even as unless you've got a very flat setup, it will be prone to voltage fluctuations. So it's better to be safe than have an unreliable curve. So the first voltage, so I'm going to write down over here, 16 hertz. We've got 2.04 volts framing. Sorry about that. So 2.04 volts. I'm going to round it to three significant figures, which means I'm only taking the first three numbers. And we can find that we've got 78.1 millivolts, which means going through this, we have about 0.1 amps, or 0.08 amps. 0.08 amps. Now we'll move on to 20 hertz. Now we don't have to swap it again, so I'm going to go. One, two, two, one. So voltage, current, current, voltage. So I don't have to swap the terminals all the time. So now at 20 hertz, we've got 123 milliamps. So 0 0.123 amps. And once again, about the two volts range. It has moved slightly though. See that also now is another important time to say make sure you've got the multimeter in AC voltage. So we've got 20.2 volts or <laughs> sorry 2.02 volts. Now next one 25 hertz. See it's dropped slightly. 1.96 I'll call that. Just swap the connectors back over. 0 0.172 amps. Now up to 28 hertz. I wish this phone focused a bit faster. Sorry about that. 0 0.184 amps. 1.931 volts. So yeah, now you can see that from the voltage we started, we've now dropped a whole tenth of a volt. Now next one. 32. Now it's starting to get a kind of a bit loud-ish, but not, not very loud, as we're only at 2 volts. And now we've got all our data. Now all we need to do is have a calculator on hand. So first off, 16. Um, voltage divided by current equals resistance. Voltage divided by current. That's it right there. That's the whole equation. So we've got 2 0.04 divided by 0 0.08 equals 25.5 ohms. Oh, can I write? 25.5 ohms. Next one, 20, which is 2.02 .02 divided by 0.123. Is sixteen point four ohms. 
11.4 ohms. So you can see that it's already starting to drop. So we've had a peak here and we're coming down into a trough. Alright, 10.49, which is essentially 10.5. Sometimes I round, sometimes I don't. 9.94 ohms, so we are getting lower. Hmm, these numbers, I think I already know what this is going to be. Yeah, this is 10 ohms. And for 40, we've got 10.7. 17.68 Okay, 17.72 10.92 So, now, if we create a graph like this where we've got impedance going up here the maximum we saw is 25 So you can see around here 12 6 You can see right here is 9 <laughs> Can I count? Um, 12 and halfway between 12 and 25 is 18.5. So we're just going to be creating a rough graph here. It's got 16. <laughs> yeah, super rough graph. It doesn't need to be too accurate. You just kind of need to look at it, and get or get the average gist of what's going on. You could take it off this here, but it's kind of easier to understand if you draw it. So we've got 16, 20, 25, 28, 32, 36, 40, 50, 60, 72. I know it's not sort of linear or anything. If anything, I should have had a big gap between 25 and 28, something like that. But... um. 16.4, which would be just slightly below here. 11.4, which is about 12. 28, 10.5, which would be around the middle point here. 32, 9.94, a bit lower. 36, 10, slightly up. 40, 11, so almost back at 12, and also, of course, draw lines across if you want. I've done this a bit, so I'm all right freehand. 50, 17.68, so back around there. 60, 17.72, so actually around the same. And 72, 10.9, so right back down here. So this is what we end up with. Yeah, we can kind of sketch it. And we'll end up with something that should look like that. So. And now if I come back to this diagram right here. You can see that we've got a dip right. And we've got our lowest impedance right at the 30 hertz mark. And either side of it, 28's up a bit. So it's closer to 36 than 28. Focus, please. <laughs> so because this impedance is... Very, these two are very close. It's closer to 32 than 36, but it's in between these two. So we can say it's probably about, we can say it's probably about 33.5. And what did we find on this one? Yeah, there's 33.6, which is pretty well right in the middle of the dip. So we can sound that, see that we've found the same value. So that's very good news. <laughs> So yeah, and also we can see some signs of this peak right here, which is on this graph, this one right here. If we go to, you can see that at 50 and 60, we should have had about the same at 17, right there. We're at 15, it's actually 16, because we've got that one ohm resistor in series that we're measuring through. Yep, oh, down a bit. Yep, see there, they are at the same point. So we've actually got a reasonably accurate representation right here. Even though it's got really sketchy sort of... Yeah. Anyway, this is how to work out um, the, the cheap way of working out impedance using a multimeter and just reading off the voltage. So you can 
let's say around 33.5 hertz and on here we test it and it was rather remarkably within yeah 33.65 there's a bit of a wobble down there but you can see that we're about 0.1 hertz out so that's pretty damn good for an approximation and stuff like that so uh if you enjoyed and learnt something uh also i understand that this is a rather complex topic so uh feel free to leave a comment asking for any pointers um i do hope that i've kind of made it simple enough for anyone to be able to follow with um at least a kind of a more exp a bit a bit higher audio knowledge than maybe a very beginner which is just making a sealed box or any old port of box and don't really care about the tuning and just want to just want to add a port and change it manually rather than finding its actual tuning. But, um, yep, if you enjoyed and want to see more content like this, then uh, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching. 1.5 hertz out, not bad. See ya.